Hello and welcome everybody to 1979. In 1979, we talk about the U.S. Open and we all know, we talked about it in this channel, Hale Irwin won the U.S. Open. But if you look online and type U.S. Open 1979, guess what pops up? John McEnroe with a wooden tennis racket. Do you remember when tennis rackets were made out of wood? Won the U.S. Open in 1979. John McEnroe. It's funny how... Tennis rackets have evolved now to where they're just spaceships of carbon fiber and like some of them are still aluminum or titanium or whatever. And nobody really seems to care. They're just like, yeah, so what? But golf clubs are like a big deal. It's like, oh, it's new carbon fiber titanium and it's everywhere. It's just, it's funny how you can get like a $20 carbon fiber racket. <laughs> but golf... I guess it's because you need a full set. Well, maybe we'll talk about this in future videos, but it's very interesting. 1979, Maxfly Australian Blade. Let's get this on the review table and have a closer look. Pretty easy to identify Maxfly on the big muscle down here by the sole, and then Australian Blade heel side of the top line, kind of small print, but easy to recognize. All caps, interesting font, and it looks like a blade. So if you look at the toe profile, you can see all that. It's just like a pyramid of muscle down here, not too curved, not chiseled like some of the later clubs would be. And then you can see the heel profile right here. Let's look at the grooves. Very no nonsense, no embellishments on the side, no diamonds, just clean grooves. Looks really good. I, the, the, Something that I notice is there's a very small section of chrome down here on the toe. Some blades seem to have more of that. Top line, you can see very little, if any, offset. I would almost, I have trouble seeing any offset. I would say no offset on this. Beautiful. You know, look at that thin top line. The shaft is pinned. I think that will show up right there. You can see the pinning right there. Two gold ferrule, two gold ring ferrule. We move up the stepped shaft. Uh, this one doesn't have any remaining stickers on it, just the one I put on to remind me the year. And this has a tachym tachymac grip made in the USA. I think tachymac is still made in the US. Are those grips still made in the US? Fact check that, let me know in the comments below. This is a beautiful blade. Let's get this out on the range and see how we feel. Maxfly Dunlop. Maxfly or Dunlop? I love it how they do this. Australian blade. That's the one thing that for sure it is, is the Australian blade. But it's gonna be like Toyota. Lexus Toyota. Toyota Lexus? Maxfly Dunlop? It's fun with the cross-branding. Not cross-branding, I know it's all part of the same brand. So, this blade feels spectacular. It's a six iron, but like looking at it, I mean, the grip is still good, which, oh, with all the clubs I hit, it's so nice to have a grip that's actually, like, grip. Not that I've ever, you know, I wouldn't lose a Titleist 983K driver out into the range or anything, but if I did, I mean, I would really appreciate, like, sticky grips. See, it's so, blades are so predictable. They're so lovely. I say this about all blades, but there's just something honest about it, you know? It's like, it tells you... You look at the ball flight and you're just like, oh, I know exactly how I hit that. Okay, I always do this because I'm, hey, I'm practicing here too, all right? Not just reviewing clubs. Weaker grip, open face. Just want to see if we can get a slight draw, straighter draw. I said that I just hit the Titleist Tour model. And I said that and it totally went left, which is par for the course. There we go. Nice high bomb to the right. Beautiful. Ah, oh, there's something so nice about whoever. This is great. This feels amazing. What year did this come out? 79. Good year, 79. So I can hit it either direction. Can I hit it straight? Probably not. One more straight one, and then maybe we'll play around a little bit. When I say straight, try to be straight. Not too much English on it, but it is... A slight pull left. I probably would have missed the green with that one. Okay, should we do a little knockdown here? I'm not going to over. I'm not going to do this 
over exaggerate this knockdown. Just a little knockdown hook. What can't you do? What can't. Beautiful iron. Why do we play anything else? Why do we have American blades when we can just play the Australian blade? I'm looking. <laughs> I wanted to see Australian blade and I wanted to see a made in the USA stamp somewhere. All right, last shot. That was a little skinny, but they went straight. Oh man, I'm in love. I'm gonna get me a set of these. Maxfly Australian blade. Is it the perfect blade? Let us know in the comments below. We do want to discuss the name, Australian Blade. Why is that? It's possible that staff pros were like traveling the world and were like, hey, we like some of these other blades in Australia more than here. And so Maxfly and Dunlop were like, oh yes, let's get what you want. And so they manufactured them, you know, starting in 1976 for their, you know, pros, their staff pros. And we're like, here you go, here we'll call it the Australian Blade, here you go. That's a possibility. Or it's possible that the owner of Maxfly, Dunlop, created a spaceship that were flying around, setting off all these like UFO warnings all over the country, and they were caught by the Australian government. They're like, whoa, you can't do that. You can shut, we're gonna shut this down. And then they were like, all right, all right, we'll name some golf clubs after your country, and then will that be cool? And they're like, all right, believe what you want, all right? Which one of these is more realistic? Come on now. So when I hit this, with this fresh thought of John McEnroe in my head, and thinking about tennis rackets compared to golf clubs, Tennis rackets, those old wooden cudgels that they, you know, go clomping around in, just, you know, hitting these golf, these, uh, golf balls on the tennis court, tennis balls, those things are archaic. They are so old. You might as well just use a ping pong paddle, right? And so with the advancements in tennis rackets, it's like, well, why would you not buy a modern tennis rackets? And then you look at something like this. 1979, I don't see how this is any worse than any blade or any club manufacturer today. You can get bigger clubs, yeah, but you can still get clubs exactly this size with the exact same engineering. Maybe they'll have a sharper edge right here. Maybe the top line will be a little bit thicker. Maybe there'll be a slightly different finish on it. Maybe the hosel will be, you know, five millimeters shorter. Who knows? But as far as like a golf implement, like a sporting tool, a sporting club, like a tennis racket or this, I don't see it, it, let me know in the comments below. Irons have not evolved the same way tennis rackets have evolved or golf drivers. So I really, really like this club and I'm gonna build a set. I like it enough, I'm gonna build a set around this. Usually, sometimes it's like the driver. Oh, I love this driver. I'm going to build a set around this driver. Other times it's, and I, like if I had to choose between this or the Wilson staff blades, I would choose this. It's close, but I would choose this mostly just because it is cool and it's slightly, like, you know, it's, it's kind of different. So let me know your thoughts about the Dunlop Maxfly or the Maxfly Dunlop Australian blade the one right around the turn of the decade, uh, 78. So I was reading about this. It's, in my book, it says this was released in 1979 with these markings with Max Fly on the muscle right here and Australian Blade on the heel top line. But apparently they announced it in 1978. And was it released in 1978 to the staff pros? I don't know. But my sources say this was released in 1979 commercially in pro shops in the United States. So... Again, let me know your thoughts about the Maxfly Australian Blade. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you not really care? There's just so many opinions out there. And do you have any memories with it? That's the key thing. Because I'm going to go make some memories with this. With this club, I'm going to get a set. And I'm going to make some memories. And I'm excited about it. As usual, thank you to my patrons. I really appreciate your support from all over the world. I really appreciate them sending things in. The contributions they make on Patreon as well. I try to post some behind-the-scenes footage pictures, videos. It's just general support over there. You can also support this channel by visiting my Amazon shop. I am an Amazon associate. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. The link for that will be in the description below. Thank you everybody for watching. I am the Vintage Golfer.